consider a stretched string having a length L and uh, we can make standing waves on it. Okay, so we can make one standing wave like this, we can make another standing wave like this, we can make another standing wave like this. Okay, in this case, the length is equal to lambda by 2. Okay, and lambda is equal to 2L and K is equal to, uh, the wave vector K is equal to 2 pi over lambda, that is equal to 2 pi over lambda is 2L and we will get pi by L. Okay, and we can make another standing wave like this, L is equal to lambda, L is equal to lambda over lambda is equal to L and K is equal to 2 pi over L. Okay, <coughs> and third one, this is the third one, L is equal to 3 lambda by 2 and lambda is equal to 2 by 3 L and K is equal to 3 pi over L. That means K can have some specific values like K is equal to pi over L, K is equal to 2 pi over L, K is equal to 3 pi over L, etc. Okay, it can have only specific values, it cannot have any value. Okay, it cannot take any values, it can have only some specific values. And this K is related to the momentum, P is equal to H cross K. That means the momentum can have only specific values. Okay, now let us come to materials. Materials, let us consider this is a conductor. Conductor, and there are many free electrons. There are many free electrons moving in every direction. Okay. So, uh, the, uh, similar to this one, similar to this case, the momentum for this electrons in this material can have only specific values, can take only specific values of momentum. Okay. So, that is related to K value, uh, like this. Okay. Like the stretched string, standing views in stretched string. The electrons in free electrons in material can take only some specific values of momentum. Okay, so uh, if we consider a material like this, and electron electrons are free electrons, and this electrons will always move in some in in, in many directions. Okay, so uh, if this electron will move in in this direction, and then another electron move in, uh, another electron can move in another direction, uh, and this may get collide with uh, with each other as well as the atoms. Okay, as well as the positive ions. And when we consider this, this, this electron moving in this direction, another electron move, will move in this that direction. So when we consider the net momentum, the net mo momentum will be zero. That means the net K values will be zero. So we can make a sphere like this. We can make a uh, sphere like this in K space. So this electrons can take only some specific values. It cannot take continuous values. And the net momentum will be equal to zero if no external force acts on it. Okay, uh, uh, that means this will move in this direction. Another electron will move in that direction. So that momentum will get cancelled, uh, and the average or net momentum will be equal to zero. So uh, we can draw a graph like this uh, for kx and ky axis, and um, we can take some particular values for this kx and ky values, and the net momentum. Uh, one particular values here. Here, look at this value, and this and this uh, k values will get cancelled, and this and and the k values will get cancelled. So, if we consider this graph, then the total momentum will be equal to zero. Okay, and when we apply some electric field or magnetic field like this, that means when we apply some force. Okay, so uh, for example, if we apply some electric field, so this end is positive and this end is negative. So, all electrons will move in this direction, in this direction. That will that electrons will move in uh, every directions, but it will it will collide, and the net net displacement will be in this direction. Net displacement will be in this direction. That means the momentum will change in some particular direction. There will be a net momentum. So if we consider this graph after applying a force, uh, after applying a force, this is the value at time t is equal to zero. K value at time t is equal to zero. And this is the K value at a particular time t. Okay, so if we apply some force, the whole Fermi sphere, whole sphere will move in some particular direction. Okay, that means the momentum, the net momentum will not be equal to zero. Here, uh, if we consider the uh, momentum, this and this will get cancelled, this and this may get cancelled, but the remaining momentums are there. So the net momentum is not equal to zero when we apply some force on this electron gas. Okay. So if we apply an external force, if we apply an external force, this is the equation of motion. Okay, this is the momentum, and the equation of motion can be written as uh, delta k is the momentum, delta k is the momentum, and the equation of motion can be written as h cross d by dt plus one over tau into delta k 
is equal to the net force okay and this term represents h cross d by dt of delta k actually h cross k is uh, in the dimension of momentum and uh, d uh, the rate of change of momentum is the force so th this this term h cross d by dt into delta k is in the dimension of force as well as h cross divided by tau is the collision time that is equal uh, that is in the dimension of force okay so this is the net force or uh, we can we can write the equation of motion like this this term represents the free particle acceleration term h cross d by dt of delta k represents the free particle acceleration term so when we apply in a force when we apply force for example an electric field uh, so this electron move uh, electron will move in move in some particular direction particular direction uh, due to this force and uh, that will accelerate in some particular direction okay when this electron accelerates in some particular direction that will collide with another electron as well as ions okay so the second term represents h cross delta k by uh, tau represents the effect of collisions or frictions frictions means the resistance for this motion if this electron move in this direction then another electron will oppose that motion or ion will oppose that motion that is the resistance so the second term h cross delta k by tau represents the effect of collisions or the friction okay and tau is the collision time and uh, <coughs> when we apply a magnetic field uh, in uniform magnetic field b the lorentz force of uh, lorentz force on an electron is okay we apply um, we, uh, uh, when we apply a uh, combined electric and magnetic field and this is the lorentz force f is equal to q into e plus q v cross b okay this is lorentz electric force and this is the lorentz magnetic force so this is an electron so we can write minus e into e plus b cross b okay so we know the h cross delta k is the momentum we can take it as mass into velocity then the equation of motion becomes instead of h cross delta k we can write m into v so m d by dt plus 1 by tau into v is equal to minus e into e plus b cross b okay and we are taking here the magnetic field is in z direction b is in z direction okay static magnetic field in z direction and uh, the three components of this equation is the, the, the three components of this equation are uh, here m into this is the x component m into d by dt of 1 by tau this is the x component of velocity vx is equal to minus a into x component of electric field is vx plus b into vy okay b into vy that means we need to get the force in x direction force in x direction to get force in x direction we need to uh, uh, we need to do the cross product of b by y cap cross b into uh, z cap actually the equation is b cross b so b by uh, should be taken in y cap into uh, uh, the magnetic field is in z direction um, static magnetic field is in z direction so v by uh, y cap cross b into z cap okay that is equal to v by b into x cap and here the y component is uh, m d by dt plus 1 by tau v by is equal to minus e into minus e into this is the y component okay this is e y e y minus b into v x okay uh, to get the y component to get the y component of force we, uh, we need to calculate the cross product of vx x cap into b into z cap okay so x cross z is minus y cap so we need to write uh, we will get minus vx b into y cap direction so that is the force in y cap direction and uh, m into d by dt of 1 by 2 is equal to um, here the z component is vz is equal to minus e into e z okay if we take uh, the velocity is in z direction uh, the magnetic field uh, also is in z direction z cross z we will get zero so uh, there is no uh, component of magnetic there is no uh, force due to the magnetic field here so these are the three components of this equation okay so in the steady state in a static electric field the time derivatives are zero okay so when we are considering a conductor when we are considering a conductor uh, one electron will if we apply an electric field here uh, electric field here uh, the electron will move in this direction okay and this will collide in this uh, collide and this will move back in this direction and this will uh, then again move in this direction like that that will move with a constant velocity okay not with an acceleration that will move the constant velocity so the time derivatives are zero time derivatives are zero so the equation m d by dt plus 1 over t v is equal to minus e into e x plus b v y is equal to uh, the, uh, 
in in this equation d by dt of bx d by dt of bx will become zero tan derivatives will become zero so we will get this relation as m bx m bx over tau is equal to minus eex minus eb into by okay and the drift velocity in x direction is uh, from this relation bx is equal to minus e tau ex over m minus eb over m into tau by okay that means bx is equal to minus e tau over m into ex minus this is the cyclotron frequency eb over m is the cyclotron frequency so that that can be taken as omega c into tau into by okay uh, similarly by is equal to minus e tau over m into e by plus omega c into tau vx as well as vz is equal to uh, the drift velocity in z direction is equal to minus e tau over m into ez okay now let us discuss hall effect the hall field is the electric field developed across the two phases of a conductor in the direction j cross b when a current j flows across a magnetic field b okay so let us consider a conductor here let us consider a conductor here this is the conductor this is the conductor and we apply a magnetic field in z direction okay so this is the direction of magnetic field uh, direction of magnetic field and um, this is the direction of current flow that means the flow of current is the flow of positive charge flow of positive charge is always from positive end to negative end so we can assume this is the positive end and this is the negative end so the electrons in uh, this conductor will move towards the positive end okay so the electrons having negative charge will move towards the positive end and uh, when this electron move through a magnetic field in z direction that will experience a force magnetic lorentz force that is equal to f is equal to minus e into v cross d and uh, the referent co reference coordinate system is this one this is the x direction this is z direction and this is y direction okay according to this coordinate system f is equal to minus e into v into velocity is in velocity is in minus x direction so minus x gap cross b is in z direction so we will get e into v into b into minus y cap okay this x cross z will get minus y cap direction and the minus and minus will get cancelled and here one minus sign is there so we will get minus y cap that means the force will experience in minus y cap direction for electron so this is a positive y direction and the opposite is minus y cap direction so in this conductor in this conductor for the electron the force will experience in this direction so the electrons will move towards like this move towards the positive end and this will bend like this um, at the beginning okay so the electrons will accumulate at this edge electrons will accumulate at this edge and the positive ions will accumulate at this edge okay positive ions will accumulate this edge so the aerial view of this plane is this one uh, the electrons will accumulate this edge and the positive ions will accumulate in this edge so there creates a there creates an electric field that field is known as hall field okay so the field is from this end to this end uh, the y component e y okay that is the electric field this is the hall field uh, electric field electric field from this edge this edge to this edge to this edge okay so this is the hall field okay and uh, <coughs> uh, if vy is equal to zero uh, you know uh, after accumulating this electrons then another electrons when this move towards this direction okay this move towards this direction that will experience a force in this direction that will experience a force in this direction so look at this the electrons uh, the electrons are accumulated here so when this electrons try to move towards this direction the repulsive force of the accumulated electrons will opposite and that electrons will move straight towards this direction straight towards this direction okay uh, that means in y direction in y direction in y direction that means uh, after accumulating this electrons and ions in y direction electron will not move so we can take we can take v y is equal to zero, and from equation a, equation a v x is equal to minus e tau over m into e x minus omega c tau v y. Okay, in that equation, if we take v y is equal to zero in y direction, velocity is equal to zero. So we, if we take v y is equal to zero, we will get v x is equal to minus e tau over m into e x. And from equation b, 
if v by is equal to zero, we will get minus e tau over m into e by plus omega c tau v x is equal to zero. Okay, from that relation, omega c tau v x is equal to e tau over m into e y, and we can substitute the value for v x from this equation. So omega c tau into minus e tau over m is equal to e tau over m into e y. Okay, and this and this will get cancelled, and we will get e y is equal to minus e b over m into tau into e x. Okay, let us define a quantity uh, R H is equal to E Y over J X into B, and is known as Hall coefficient. Okay, and we know J X is the current density, uh, and that is equal to that is equal to N E square tau over M into E X. Okay, by Ohm's law, uh, N E square tau over M into E X. So uh, this R H is equal to E Y. E Y we got here. E Y is equal to minus E B over M into tau into E X minus E B uh, over M into tau into E X divided by J X is n e square tau by m into e x into b okay and that is equal to uh, that is equal to minus 1 over n e minus 1 over n e e x and e x will get cancelled b and b will get cancelled tau and tau will get cancelled m and m will get cancelled and uh, 1 e and the square will get cancelled so minus 1 over n e and uh, r is equal to minus 1 over n e and where n is the carrier concentration okay so the advantage of this relation is advantage of this relation is by using this relation actually we have defined R is equal to E by over J X into B by using this relation uh, look at this we know the current flow flow of current current density we can find out uh, current density we can find out and we know the applied magnetic field B and uh, we can find out the uh, electric field we can uh, find out the hard field okay E by we can find out so from this relation we can find out rh e y over j x into b this three quantities we can find out and we can find out rh okay from that equation rh is equal to minus 1 over n e okay so we already got rh and uh, we know the uh, we know the charge of uh, this one e is equal to 1.6 in from this to minus 19 and we can find out easily the carrier concentration from this relation okay that is the advantage of hall coefficient